A woman depends on her two dogs to save her after a grisly encounter with a bear. And a house cat comes to the rescue when her owner finds herself face to face with a deadly predator. Jason McCoy and welcome to Pet Heroes. Why do animals put themselves in harm's way when danger threatens the lives of their human companions? We're going to explore the stories of Alina Hansen and Kimberly Kotar, two women whose amazing pets came to the rescue when they were needed most. Alina Hansen lives on a ranch in a remote volcanic basin at the base of the Southern Sierra Mountains. I live in what I like to call Eden. Uh, there's maybe 500 households in a 500 square mile area. It's very remote. There's nothing here. The closest gallon of milk is 67 miles away. I love the idea of being as self-sufficient as I can be. Um, it was a wonderful place to raise my child. And that's really, I think, why I came here. Elena's constant companions are dogs Arky and Irish Wolfhound and Decoy, an English Mastiff. My dogs are working dogs in as much as they're my security system up here. They're completely non-aggressive or I wouldn't have them here. But they're intimidating looking. And, you know, when mountain lions or bears or whatever come anywhere near here, they let me know. R.K. was named after Archimedes and he's a mathematician. He doesn't know he's huge. You know, he just thinks he's a little puppy. He's the most enthusiastic character I've ever met. The Mastiff, on the other hand, he personifies sloth. If he doesn't have to move, he doesn't. He was a rescue dog, apparently bred for uh, dog fighting and uh, being a watchdog for a drug operation in Bakersfield. And they kept this poor thing chained by its neck to a tree stump in 115 degree heat with no shade. All you have to do is look at him and you go, that's a scary looking dog. But he's very gentle and he's totally devoted to me. They're very good friends. There are different facets of my own personality. But together they make one really interesting personality. The arrival of summer 2008 in the Sierras brings with it dramatic, often destructive weather. We had a huge wildfire. It was about a month long fire. Kurt Merrill has been captain of the Kern County Fire Department for the last 10 years. And all these animals got dispersed. So the weeks and months after that fire, we had an increase of sighting of bears and deer and all kinds of other wild animals. But fire isn't the only threat facing residents and wildlife in the mountains this year. We had torrential rains in July that washed out trees and boulders and completely changed the terrain. They had silted in my spring, uh, which supplied the water for my orchards. And uh, I had to dig it out by hand. As you can see, the spring box is full of silt and dirt from the rains. This has to be dug out maybe five or six feet to get down to the water, which is filling out the side here. This water goes down and waters the orchards and my gardens, so it's kind of necessary that I do this. July 22nd begins as an ordinary day on Elena's ranch. First thing in the morning is the sunlight coming up. I'm out doing my chores. But ordinary is not remotely how this day will end. It's like Pearl Harbor or 9-11. I won't forget that day. If you've ever bathed in the mountain spring, you know it gets cold. <laughs> After about two hours of reaching down and pulling out rocks, I thought it was time to get out and get warm, get the feeling back in my legs. So I climbed out and it's this perfect day. You know, the filtered sunlight's coming through the pine trees and little birds are singing and it smells like summer camp. It's just magical. I'm, I'm lost in the moment here. My dogs are sleeping down the creek just around the bend where they usually are. So I step out of the spring box, heading over this way to warm up, walk over to this old stump and right there, there is the bear, right by that tree stump and it's staring right into my eyes. I've always 
seen it as a gift when I see a bear. It's very special. I'd be riding my horse in the backcountry or occasionally glimpse one when I'm out hiking with the dogs. And it's part of the magic of living here. On this occasion, the bear isn't special. It's terrifying. It was staring hard into my eyes, and I knew exactly what was coming. I had maybe a half a second of eye contact with the thing, and I just went, oh, no. After the break, it's up to Arky and Decoy after a deadly encounter with the bear leaves Elena fighting for her life. All you have to do is believe. While working near her property, rancher Elena Hansen suddenly finds herself face to face with a bear. And the next thing I knew, bam, it was in my face. Leaps, grabs me by the ears, bites into my face, and knocks me down into the mud. The next thing I know, I'm lying there with my face in the water, and this bear is chewing on my head. It was savaging me. I could hear its breath and it was grunting. And I thought, wow, but this is what it feels like to be eaten by a bear. And I could feel it. Every bite it went through. And I felt my bones crunching. I felt it bite through my eye. I felt my skin being ripped off. And at that point, I opened up my eyes and I looked at this thing that was eating me. And its eye was right here next to my eye, as close as a kiss. And I went, no! And I took my phone, which I realized was free, I was kind of like this, and I went, yeah! <laughs> and then I grabbed it again. And the thing let go of my face, long enough for me to yell for my dogs. Because I knew he'd come. I knew the master would fall the whole time. Wendy McClellan, a doctor of veterinary medicine, offers her unique perspective on animal behavior. Dogs can detect when someone is in danger very quickly. I speculate in this case it was the strain in Elena's voice that caused Arkane and Decoy to come running to her aid. Because they are so bonded, they immediately picked up on the change in her behavior and responded immediately. One is an Irish wolfhound, and the other is a master. They are bred as soldiers and hunters. It's those traits that allow them to react when Elena thinks the same thing. I don't remember what happened next, but I was lying there and I heard the dog screaming in pain. And I looked over and the bear had my mastiff down on his back and was chewing on his belly. And I thought, you know, my dog is willing to die to try to save my life. The least I can do is get up and try to get out of here. You know, and honor that sacrifice. I'm sure the wolfhound was nearby. The wolfhound was staying with me because I had to stumble down maybe 200 yards of creek bed and I couldn't see. So I was just following the irrigation pipe. I was blind. I didn't have any shoes on. And I stumbled into the ravine, which is the worst thing that could have happened to me. But, you know, I've escaped the bear, and I'm going to get nailed by a rattlesnake. This is so not fair. And so I just screamed to the heavens. Ah! And apparently, it was one of those primal screams that they tell you about. The wolfhound heard that, too. Arky hears Elena scream and comes running to her aid. And here's this 200-pound puppy galumping up through the brush and the bramble clearing a pathway through it for me to get out. And I put my hand on his head and he guided me down the mountain. He saved me. Arky leads Elena to the remote road where her car is parked but he has unfinished business with her attacker. And I realized the wolfhound was gone, and I could hear him screaming. I thought, oh, God, it's not my wolfhound. Arky! I was pretty sure both of my dogs were dead. Arky rejoins the fight, allowing Decoy to rush to Alana's side. Imagine this. I'm up on a mountain on this suggestion of the road. I'm in my car, and I just gunned it. 
I thought gravity is your friend, you'll get to the bottom one way or another. I really do not have a clue how I made it. RC and decoy was successful in fighting off the bear by implementing a tag team approach. This approach is common in dogs in the wild when they are either attacking a predator or defending themselves. One will attack while the other distract. Very effective. Incredibly, Elena manages to drive to the nearby Kern County Fire Department. So it's amazing that she just drove herself from that location down here to the fire station, which is about you know, three miles. But half her face ripped off. That's amazing. EMT Evan Davidson witnesses her arrival. First thing I thought was, oh my God, uh, this lady has a lot of damage to her face and we need to get her help right now. Davidson helps the stricken woman. He is soon joined by Chief Kurt Merrill. I asked her her name, and she said Alana Hansen. And at that point, I was thrown back because I knew Alana Hansen. I didn't recognize her at all. She told me that she's by herself with her two dogs, that she got attacked by a bear, and her two dogs intervened, and she had thought that one of her dogs was killed during the attack. I knew the mask was alive, but I didn't know how badly he'd been injured, and I knew that the wolf hound was dead. We heard this <laughs> of the Arizac coming out from Mojave, and they loaded me onto the helicopter and airlifted me down to UCLA. At the hospital, doctors work nearly 10 hours and use over a thousand stitches to rebuild Alana's face. And I saw her a few weeks uh, after, the, uh, after the attack, and it was a pretty amazing the way she looked and she looked extremely well for what she went through the dogs i believe they did they did save her life they uh they they took all the uh, attention away from her they attacked her there and uh, allowed her to escape i believe that if the dogs weren't there that maybe days weeks later she would have been found as much as i'd like to feel vengeful i don't because it's a bear the Irish Wolfhound and the Mastiff make a great team. The Wolfhound brings in the swiftness and the reliability, and the Mastiff brings in the courage and the power. Not long after receiving emergency reconstructive surgery, Elena returns home where Decoy is waiting for her. And so is someone else. And here come these two big dogs just bounding up to the car, and I just burst into tears. Other dogs were happy to see me. Just like nothing had ever happened. Miraculously, Elena's dogs have sustained only minor injuries. You can hear me with your boots and your nails and lips and leaning against me and little whimpers. I'm like, I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. Everybody had a big group hug. They're my dogs. They're my family. You know, they're my, they're my friends. They're heroes, but I don't want it to go to their head. Next, when a Quebec woman comes face to face with one of the world's deadliest snakes, it's up to her cat to save her. 